Good morning. morning. Welcome in Jesus' name. It's great to be gathered together on this beautiful warm morning. And uh, but it is a wonderful week ahead as we consider Christmas and uh, Christmas Eve coming up this week. If you take a quick look in the bulletin, that's the couple things to note. Our last of Advent of our Advent services will happen on Wednesday evening over at um, Spruce, and we'll finish off the Nativity story that evening and uh, do that. We will also just note that confirmation is over at Spruce at six o'clock as well. So just be aware of that. And then Friday evening, we'll have our Christmas Eve candlelight service here at Rose at 4.30. And you're invited to come um, to that. Uh, well, if I'm not, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything here all of a sudden. <laughs> I think that's all the announcements in that regard. It's hard to believe uh, the year is going to end pretty quick. So uh, we'll be on to 2022 here in just a bit. The prayer list is there in the bulletin and I encourage you to keep praying um, for those that are listed. Are there any other announcements or any other uh, prayer requests that you might have this morning as we... Can't believe how silent everybody is. The boxes are on their way overseas. They've been gone through. And so what an amazing thing that way. Um, we, we don't know where they go, do we? They'll give us a continent anyway. Okay, <laughs> that'll be good. Let's start with prayer this morning. Oh, buddy. About the Christmas party this afternoon. Oh, yes, I need to remember that. The Christmas party this afternoon, and that is at what time? Four o'clock, Four o'clock this afternoon is the Christmas party here at Rose. Um, some good fish and uh, other things. I um, encourage you to come to that. Also, after the service today, the choir is going to practice um, as well. Hopefully we can sing at the... Christmas Eve service. If you're interested in singing in the choir, um, you can certainly do that. Um, if you don't want to sing and you just want to stand up front, that's fine too. And, uh, but it'd be great uh, if you would be able to do that. Let's talk with God as we begin this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the, that simple truth <laughs> that you did come to this earth. And uh, I'm so thankful for the Christmas program that we had last week here at Rose and for the Christmas program at Spruce this morning with that straightforward message from the kids um, considering the, the fact that you came to this earth. Lord, you see our prayer list. You know there's a number of different needs that are out there and especially at this time of the year, Lord, we pray for those families that are, have an empty chair or they have those memories of different things. Lord, may the memories be good, but also may we, we consider again that uh, we can have eternal life because you came. Lord, do your work today too, I pray, through your word as it's shared and as we um, sing and we praise you and confess that you are Lord. Um, accept that today, Lord, for you are the one true God. We pray these things in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Uh, let's stand together and sing the opening song this morning. Um, got a few Christmas songs involved here, but let's sing num number 25 in the hymnal. But uh, Angels from the Realms of Glory, let's sing it together.
Let's take a moment to confess our sins this morning and we'll use the confession that's in the front of the hymnal there, page two, but also the words will be up on the screen. And uh, may we once again just bow our hearts and uh, humbly go before the only one who can truly forgive. So join me, please. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll call on our scripture reader this morning at this time. Good morning. It's good to be back. I'm reading from the Green New International Version Bible. And if you'd like to follow along, it's on pages 1563 through 1564. You know, I feel blessed to be able to read this scripture this morning. It records the, Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer and learning to pray for the right things and then praying with persistence. Persistence works. Even when friendships fail, this chapter is meant to encourage us to pray, and Luke, more than any of the other evangelists, demonstrated the importance of prayer in Jesus' life and his ministry. So please join me as I read from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Jesus teaching on prayer. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door's already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you bread because of friendship, yet your shameful audacity because of it he will surely get up and give as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Blessed be his word. Thank you, Carmen, for reading that today. And 
it's always a treat when Carmen reads, too. She uh, puts it all out there. I don't know if I have to preach today, Carmen. You kind of laid it out, which is great. No, it's wonderful to hear those words. Let's confess our faith today by, by song. And I, I've chosen a, a, well, it's a Polish carol, Moja Trova Yachikoya. It's a, um, about Jesus. And in part of this carol, we are recognizing who he is, just as we would in the Apostles' Creed. And so let's sing it as a confession of our faith today, this wonderful um, Polish carol, um, lullaby, so to speak, infant holy, infant lowly. Let's do that together. Let's continue in worship as we've proclaimed him Lord of all. Let's give back to him with our tithes and offerings here this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the Lord of all. And thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you for coming. Holy Spirit, we just pray that as people give these gifts today, that you would bless them in their hearts. And they would know that these are being used so that people may find out about you, the good news that the shepherds shared so long ago. Amen.
please be seated. It's not in our bulletin, but we have some special music today as well. We just had some special music, but we'll get some more special music. Tammy's going to share with us a song today, too. I was going to say, we don't need any special music after that. That was fabulous. Um, the word Noel comes from a French phrase meaning the good news. And you were talking about the good news, the good news of Jesus' birth, and even the bigger plan in it all is the good news of salvation. the love. 
Thank you, Tammy, so very much. I, I'm, I'm feeling way more than blessed above blessed um, just from being here, but you guys didn't get to be over at Spruce and hear the Christmas program over there, and uh, the, the shepherds got put on trial, and uh, they couldn't help but tell the good news, and now I get to hear the good news all over again um, today with, with Ryan's playing and Tammy's and Carmen with you reading that scripture so well. Um, Kids, why don't you come on up? Let's do the children's message here today and see what the letter O has in store But uh, as we go along. Well, the kids must have slept in today. There's not many of them here. The big kids are around the show. All right, let's see if you guys can do all the... We've been doing the ABCs for you who are visiting today. We've been doing ABCs with songs. So A... Away in the manger. B, baby shark. baby shark. You may wonder, why do we do baby shark? Family. Family. C, country roads, country roads take me home. Where's our home? Heaven, Heaven eventually. D, e. e, F, you sure? You sure faith is the victory? Yeah. Faith in who? In, God. in Jesus. Yeah, in God. Okay. Just make sure, because you can have faith in a lot of things. G. Go tell it on the mountain. Yeah, go tell it on the mountain. H. Holy, holy, holy. holy. It's the song of heaven, the angels sing. I. It came upon a midnight. Yes, exactly. It came upon a midnight clear. J. Jingle bells. Jingle bells, the family riding in the sleigh. K. The king is coming. The king is coming. He came once and he's coming again, isn't he? L. Look to the rainbow. Now, we, we need to light some of these candles, right? Yeah. As we go. But M. Do you remember M? You should, because Tim did it, remember? My generation, right? That was the thing we learned about. I mean, you learned about the fact that sin is coming in every generation. We need a Savior. What would it have been if I would have been here for that one? Do you remember what I told you? Mary had a little lamb, which would fit for Christmas, because Mary had a little lamb, the lamb of the world, with things that way. N, last week, the pink, the pink candle, remember? Do you think they remember out there? You don't think so? You guys were pretty excited last week, and you guys had a great... Christmas concert here. Do you guys remember what N was? It's my favorite song. Near the, near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. And that pink candle reminds us of the blood of Christ. Jesus, keep me Now, we've got to do O today. Any O songs you guys can think of? Okay, what? What? Oh no, what are we going to do? <laughs> you know, that would kind of fit because a lot of people today don't know what they're going to do and we need a Savior. But that's not the one I'm going to use today, but that's a good one. What's a good Christmas song to start with, though? Oh, Holy Night. I've been singing that all week thinking about that, but I decided this morning to go with something different. Although, Oh, Holy Night would be great. I started, I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, I, this morning, this song popped into my head. Old MacDonald had a farm. That starts with O, right? How does that fit in? What could we learn from Old MacDonald having a farm? Someone having a farm. Uh, let me ask you, where was Jesus born? Yeah, well, he was born in a stable, right? Were there animals around? Did he get put into a feeding trough? Yeah. That would tie into things. We could also talk about growing old, but we won't do that, okay? But old MacDonald had a farm. The animals were around too. Jesus was put into a feeding trough. And so as we light that fourth candle, sure, come on up. Zeke paid me off beforehand, just so you know. There you go. Now make sure you turn away when you blow it out. Okay, don't 
See? Want to do it again? So when you do it this time, remember to turn away when you, when you do it. You, there you go. Light it that way. There you go. <laughs> now turn the other way. Zeke, when you get married someday? Yeah, I'm going to keep blowing them out. No, that's the, key. <laughs> that's the key to marriage when you light that unity candle that you turn and blow out your own candle, okay? <laughs> that would be the key. But, um, Old MacDonald had a farm. Let's pray, guys, and then you can have, I guess since there's just a few of you, you can have four pieces of candy today. Two for yourself and two to share, okay? Look at, look at them, how hungry they are out there, so you can give them a couple things. But let's pray. Two to share, yep. Lord, thank you that we can share the good news of you coming to this world, and thank you for the music we've had today, today and the scripture that's been read. May it take root in each of these young hearts as they go forward and in our hearts, and uh, help us to be like the shepherds and go tell the good news that's out there. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Four. Two for yourself and two to share, Joey. Before the message today, I, I picked out one that wasn't a Christmas song, but it ties in with the message for today. So let's, uh, let's sing this wonderful song, Sweet Hour of Prayer, as we look at the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray today.
Open your Bibles again to uh, Luke chapter 11. We're going to look at those first 13 verses there as they all talk about prayer. And I've entitled this Oxygen Mask or Oxygen. Um, the thought that came to mind here, if you've ever gone on a flight, an, an airplane flight, um, what's the thing that the, uh, the stewards do at the very beginning for you? They show you how to buckle your seatbelt and they go through the whole thing. How many of you pay attention to that as it comes along? I don't always. I try to pay attention enough. I, I suppose what I figure is that when the, when the oxygen mask actually falls down, I'm going to use it the way I'm supposed to use it. And uh, it'll be ready for me. And, and I hope that it never has to fall down because that would mean that it's some sort of emergency that's taking place. <laughs> And uh, I guess what I put here this down for is, do we see prayer as an oxygen mask that we just use when it's going to have to be used? It's there ready for us. Or is it oxygen to you and me? <laughs> if the Lord is right, and indeed He is, <laughs> prayer should be oxygen. For you and me. It's a constant essential, essential thing for us to live. Martin Luther put it this way. He said, to a Christian, without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. If we have a daily personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we should want to communicate with him, shouldn't we? He talks to us through his word. And, and prayer itself, and, and confirmation kids, I could have them all come up, because what have we been studying the whole first half of the year here? We've been studying the Lord's Prayer. And uh, by the way, you can pray for the confirmation kids. They've got a test on Wednesday night, the Lord's Prayer. And my tests are, they are, they're going to, it's, they're hard. No, they aren't. If they know the Lord's Prayer, they're going to be in good shape. That's the key. But prayer is so essential for you and me. Being honest with you, I'm just going to tell you, it's easier to preach about prayer than it is to keep a consistent prayer life myself. <laughs> what, how... How should I pray? Am I doing it right? If prayer's so great, why does it sometimes feel like a burden? Can I tell you why? Because we turn it into a work rather than a relationship. The wonderful thing about Scripture, it says to pray without ceasing, to pray at all times. You know what it's telling us? We can be in a constant attitude of prayer. It's better than our cell phone. If our cell phone rings, we pull it out right away and we handle things. But we can always be ready to talk with God. From the smallest of things to the biggest of things. And the truth of the whole matter is, is as Carmen was pointing out, G Luke notes this, but Jesus thought and taught about prayer and he prayed often. And Luke is the one who gives us the most times that it mentions him. It, it, it wasn't just a spiritual discipline for Jesus. But the key to the whole thing with prayer is that Jesus focused on his Father. Our problems with prayer lie exactly there. We have misconceptions about God. <laughs> if we understand God better, we would both pray more and we'd enjoy it more. <laughs> Jesus isn't giving us here a prayer technique as much as he is giving us an appreciation for God the Father. And we'll get to see it here through a parable and we also get to see it through a, a, a last part of things as well, a principle that's laid out for us in prayer. <laughs> So if I give you a quick outline, it's the pattern of prayer today. It's, it's the, the uh, p 
parable of prayer and it's the principles of prayer that we have. Let's start out with that pattern of prayer there in verses 1 through 4. Usually if you want to learn how to do something, you go to an expert, don't you? <laughs> and that's what, that's what the disciples do here. Who'd be more of an expert than Jesus? <laughs> And it starts out there, it says, one day when Jesus was praying. This was usual for Jesus, okay? Luke mentions at least seven times when Jesus was praying. It was an important part of his life. In Luke chapter 5, verse 16, in fact, it tells us that Jesus himself often withdrew into the wilderness and he prayed, <laughs> He prayed at his baptism in chapter 3, the choosing of his disciples in chapter 6, Peter's confession of faith in chapter 9, at the transfiguration later on in chapter 9, at the crucifixion he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. Those are the ones that are mentioned for us. But in Luke chapter 5 there, it tells us that he would do it often. He would go and he would pray. And so the disciples were seeing this in Jesus' life regularly. So one day, they come to Jesus and say, Lord, teach us to pray. Notice that they didn't say, teach us a prayer. They said, teach us to pray. Now, we use the Lord's Prayer because it's a pattern for us. And it's perfectly fine that we use it at the end of every service. In fact, there are many churches today who don't use it anymore because it's just a pattern for prayer. And if we just make it rote, it's not rote. Ask any of the confirmation students as we go through each of those petitions, how much is there and how much is asked to God? It is such a rich prayer but here he gives that pattern he says to pray like this it's a model prayer jesus is saying that and we could spend a long time here going throughout this whole prayer we could oh we could take well three months we'll go through it here you guys got enough time we could do that i'm going to quickly just run through it a little bit here tonight i had some people some people are like looking at me like we're not going to sit here for three months are we but look at it just real quickly, some of the parts of it. We're going to note three principles from this just really quickly. First of all, prayer is to the Father. He's the object of the prayer. True Christian prayer is the language of intimacy. The loving conversation of a father with his child. <laughs> I mean, think about this though. What can you tell God? I mean, he knows everything already, right? <laughs> but God wants us to pray. And do you notice it says, Our Father? It's very personal. It's a purpose, purpose deepening relationship. The other thing about prayer here, the second thing is prayer is about the Father's glory. Hallowed be thy name. It's a plea that God would be honored among men. His name is already holy. <laughs> but we want to hallow His name. How do you hallow God's name? By living out your life for Him. Your kingdom come. Jesus would be Lord here upon earth. That's what we're praying for, that he's Lord now in the hearts of people. Where is the kingdom of God today? It's in the congregation. It's in the hearts of true believers. But we're also praying for his kingdom to come, for him to come back again. Like the letter K from the children's sermon, the king is coming. In prayer, God's glory, God's program takes precedence over all else. <laughs> we mess up prayer if we make it all about ourselves rather than about honoring God. 
By the way, God does want us to deal with things ourselves too. We'll see that. That said, the third thing here is prayer is about our needs. God wants us to petition Him, to bring things to Him. As we will see here, we are to ask and to seek and to knock and to keep doing so. (laughs) Give us this day our daily bread. (laughs) To meet our daily needs, not just our wants and the luxuries. When he said to pray like this, he meant for us to call out to him to supply our needs. By the way, is it okay to pray for a new car? Of course it is. But know that God can answer one way or the other, right? We put it in His hands. But we pray for our daily needs. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our greatest need is to be forgiven. And if we're forgiven, then we need to forgive others (laughs) to admit our sinfulness to to admit admit our utter depravity but to know we have one that can bring about that true forgiveness (laughs) lead us not into temptation help us Lord as we deal daily with the enemies of our soul our sinful nature the world system and Satan (laughs) so Jesus here having given the pattern of prayer tells a story he goes to a parable and so we have a parable about prayer we often call it the parable of the midnight caller now i I need to let you know that in israel (laughs) and in the middle east there days are hot (laughs) they can be a hot time and people would travel then because it was so hot during the day they'd travel often in the evening Just the opposite of what we do this time of year, right? We want to travel during the day, even though there's not much daylight. (laughs) But they would travel in the evening, and the custom in that day, and but well, by the way, sometimes when you're traveling in the dark, there's going to be some unexpected delays sometimes, right? Right? Kind of like traveling in the snow. You're going to have some unexpected delays. That's the way it is. And so that was the custom. It, that day was was for a host as that person was traveling if a person came and you were hosting them you needed to provide a meal not not to do so would bring dishonor on the host and perhaps on your entire village there's no refrigeration there's nothing in the cupboards so when that person has somebody come late at night like this person did they got delayed or whatever at least it's at midnight (laughs) he needs to give these people something so he runs over to the neighbor and he asks the neighbor he appeals to him to give him something so he can satisfy the custom now to better understand this i want you to picture a one-room home the whole family in those days they would have slept on the floor (laughs) and when the door is bolted if somebody gets up in the middle of all this what's going to happen to everybody they're all going to get woken up so you can understand in this parable the neighbor's reluctance (laughs) but to deny this request again is against everything of the cultural values Now, Jesus assures us that he will respond, that this neighbor will. It may not be motivated by friendship, but because of the man's boldness. You see that there? His audaciousness. Because of that, he's going to get up and give him as much as he needs. We see it there in verse 8 of the text. (laughs) Think about it. When you've gotten calls after midnight... You ever get a phone call after midnight? What's running through your mind when that call comes in after midnight? What's happened? This has got to be an emergency. (laughs) 
you realize that a conversation after midnight is not going to be a casual conversation. <laughs> but the boldness here reveals the importance. I guess I should ask it this way. You ever had to call somebody after midnight? <laughs> I've had to do it before. I've gotten calls after midnight, but I've had to do it before. So I'm going to ask you, how do we understand this parable then in regards to prayer? I mean, is God like some sleepy little neighbor who is irritated when I come to him? And at, his in, at that inconvenient time with my deep need, does he feel badgered then into responding? <laughs> Has God gone to bed? <laughs> is he temporarily out of touch and I need to wake him up? No. The opposite of that is true. He is not a sleepy friend, but a loving father. If an emergency arises for one of my kids, for one of my children, and it comes at an unearthly hour, I may not be thrilled at the inconvenience, but I want to get to my child and do all I can do to help them. My God is eager to help all the more. My Heavenly Father wants to respond to my need. This is not a parable of comparison here as much as it is a parable of contrast. The Lord is not a sleepy neighbor, but the thing is, He is sure to answer when we call. And we see in this last part, as he desires that, that we keep on asking, that we keep on seeking, that we keep on knocking. <laughs> he invites us to come to him boldly <laughs> and confidently. We read in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9, that we have confidence to enter the holy place because of who Jesus is, because of who God is. <laughs> and so he invites us to come boldly and confidently to the Father. That's what's being brought out here in this parable, is that we can go to him at any time. And lastly, in verses 9 through 13, we see some principles of prayer. And as Carmen so put it so well, it's the persistence. The first thing we have is a persistence of a principle of persistence. It's the pre, it's a present tense verb, by the way. So it means on. We can keep on, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. <laughs> a faith that will make requests. True sincerity in seeking and knocking, knowing that the barriers, barriers that appear to arise may not be refusals, as much as God's desire that we keep on coming to Him. By the way, He doesn't tell us what to ask for, but it's clear to whom we are to go to the Father. He's the one that's committed to what you and I need. We don't need to nag and pester Him, but we are to persist. Let me ask you here, does God use delay sometimes? When God answers prayer, there are, sometimes people say there's three ways that He answers prayer. He can answer yes, and He could answer yes even before we ask. And sometimes he just flat out says no. But sometimes he doesn't answer. And it's almost like we have to wait. We keep praying. You know, there are people, I mean, there are probably prayers that you've prayed over and over again for somebody in your life. You've prayed for them to come to Christ, to know him. <laughs> And there are many people who have prayed those prayers and they've passed away and those prayers never got answered till after they had died. God sometimes uses that delay. 
and we trust that he knows what he's doing. He knows the right time. He knows the right place. He knows what you and I need. We won't ask if we think we can meet the needs ourselves. <laughs> but if we know or we can recognize that God alone can supply our needs, that's when we ask. There's an old Norwegian. His name was Ole Hallesby. And he wrote probably one of the greatest books on prayer. It's just simply called Prayer. Prayer. That's the way Norwegians are. We've got to keep it pretty simple, right? But he uses something here, and I'm going to use a quote from him because there's a key to this. He says, Prayer and helplessness are inseparable. Only he who is helpless can truly pray. Your helplessness is your best prayer. In our helplessness, we realize that God is the one that we can turn to. That's true prayer. Sometimes your best prayer, best prayer is when you don't even know what to say. For God knows your helplessness. Now I know this doesn't always fit with our world today where we're supposed to be strong and we're supposed to be able to do it ourselves. But you know what? When you really know that things can happen is when you realize you can't do it in your own power. But you have one who can. (laughs) And you're trusting in Him. You're trusting in the God of the universe who can do anything. He's a God who can meet us right where we're at and He can help. (laughs) By the way, do we receive everything we pray for? (laughs) No. Isn't that wrong? Because look, read in verse 10 what it says. Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. Him who knocks the door will be opened. Some people have wrongly taken this verse and they've said that if if I name it and I claim it, God's going to do it. (laughs) You will have preachers that are preaching that this morning. And if it doesn't happen for you, you didn't have enough faith. That's a bunch of baloney. We have a God who knows everything. We have a God who knows what true help is. If your kid asked you for everything they wanted for Christmas and you gave them everything they wanted for Christmas, would that be a good thing? (laughs) I had a feeling that I was going to get an answer to that one. (laughs) Joey, in about 20 years or 25 years, you'll understand that a little better. Because I would have said the same thing at your age. God knows what's best for us. If he gave, we got everything, we'd be a spoiled brat. And that's what leads to these verses 11 and 12. I mean, look at that. That's what he brings out. Look at verse 11. Which of your fathers, if your son asked for a fish, would give him a snake instead? I don't think your dad would give you a snake if you asked for a fish. Would he, Joey? Yeah, (laughs) I don't don't think so either. If he asked for an egg, would give him a scorpion. What Jesus does here is he builds now on earthly fathers, imperfect as we are. (laughs) But who would give something harmful and destructive when a child asks for something good? As an earthly father, I delight in meeting my child's needs and hopefully I hear and hopefully I discern that need as it comes. As a perfect heavenly father, we can have confidence that he hears and he discerns our needs in his wisdom. And as God, he knows no limits. How much more will he give us what we need? He never gives foolishly. He never gives haphazardly. He never lacks resources. He doesn't need to act insecurely and buy us, buy our love with gifts. (laughs) 
He never says no because he's distracted or irritated or exhausted at the moment. But you and I can go to him with unlimited confidence. He is Lord. He will never give me what is contrary to my good or his glory. If you look in the outline there at Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, I put it in the outline. Matthew records this. He says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? The final principle here is a principle of assistance. the Holy Spirit. We need God. We need the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives, so that we can pray. Without Him, we don't know how to pray. Does God hear the prayer of an unbeliever? Yes, He does. But when we don't know what to say, we have the Holy Spirit, if we're trusting in Him, that cries out for us. How do I get the Holy Spirit? When we've come in our helplessness, when we've been saved, when we allow Him entrance, He, the Helper, will come. We need God Himself, His indwelling Spirit. The mystery, as it's brought out in the book of Colossians, Christ in you and in me. The key to prayer is not me or you. The key to prayer is God Himself. Yes, our helplessness, but more importantly, his fatherliness. So let me ask you as we close this out today, how do you see prayer? Do you see it as an oxygen mask? Or do you see it as the oxygen, the air you breathe? When we truly pray, we admit that we can't do it on our own, that we need a father. And so we come near to the cross again. (laughs) And we humble ourselves before the one who can really give life. And when we truly pray, we experience, we have a relationship then with our Father. And even though sometimes it's uncomfortable to be in His presence, we end up enjoying His presence. And we receive his answers. And we have that daily living relationship with Jesus. How do I end a sermon like this? I guess the best way to end it is simply this. Breathe. Pray. Live. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and thank you for answering the disciples' questions. And even as we pray at the end of our service today, this pattern of prayer, I pray, O Holy Spirit, that you would use it and that you would call to each of our hearts even today. If we know you as our Father, that we would grow in that relationship and that we'd share it with those around us, like the candy that will be shared. If we don't know you, Lord, help us to know that you're a Father who says, Come. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank you, Jesus. I pray in your wonderful name. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing song. And uh, 
It's a song that uh, brings us back to the, the night Jesus was born. Hark the herald angels sing. And may we be able to proclaim it. Let's sing it together. Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. He said, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord himself bless each of you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one true and living God. Amen and amen. Amen.